Good evening, brothers and sisters. We do apologize for the brief yet still tardiness, technical difficulties. Our apologies. No. Moved, but uh, we're not getting the camera that we want to get. So we apologize for the lack of quality that we just started doing. But the show must indeed go on. We have a camera that works, and so we will work with it. Figure it out later. So we're not getting what we're hoping for. Are you hear me uh, clearly? Typically sitting at the desk using the camera that's from the uh, laptop itself. But again, the show must go on. So let's get into our teaching. We're in chapter three of First Corinthians. We're working through uh, First Corinthians. We thank you for those who have been joining us. In a, a, a an enlightening study. I, of course, read through the scriptures, uh, but but we just dig in. And go thought by thought, and in some cases, even looking at, of course, the words in their original presentation has been really enriching. And I, and I pray that you are being blessed as we are walking through this, really, essentially together. That being said, let's let's dive right back in. Now, what we, as we moved into chapter three, we talked about, or Paul, I should say, is is writing. And then, now, now, now I, I want to say this, make sure I'm saying this as often as I can. This is one letter. It, it, chapter one, chapter two, and all of that. Yeah, true. For, for our being able to look at the coordinates and move through it. But really, this is one letter. This is a letter. And, and so letters are not broken into chapters and verses. And these were not originally. This was all one ongoing thought coming out of Paul. And we believe by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But uh, 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 what is necessary to keep in mind is not only that, but that as you're reading this, thoughts will reoccur. If you've ever written letters, in fact, we don't really do it too much these days, but back in the day, when we would write a letter or a, an email type letter, we would sometimes come back to previous thoughts as we are carrying those thoughts forward. So I, I want to make sure you understand that you don't fall prey to believing that this is just Paul being redundant in any way. Uh, shape or form. No. Paul is driving home certain things, and of course to do that is very really common for uh, uh, the writer uh, uh, the epistles to to rehearse. And, and, and I'm bringing that up in particular tonight because that is what's actually going to happen. Paul is going to rehearse certain points, certain thoughts, and, and pull them forward and, and highlight them in a far more greater way. And in chapter 3, Quote, chapter three, as we call it, now that we are, we're, we're now moving into to it, we see him doing this. And obviously that means early on in the letter, he's going to do that. Now, last week, we won't review much again. Uh, of, of they're right here on the channel, saved on the channel. If you're on a laptop or a desktop computer, you can just hit the video tab and be able to see it. Or you can just scroll down and be able to read the descriptions on the video tab. They, unfortunately, they, they with their updates, I think a year or so ago, used to be you can roll your mouse over it and you can actually see what what the title is, but they made changes there. You can no longer do that. You have to click into it to actually see what it's talking about. Unfortunately, if you're on so if you're on a cell phone or, or, or tablet, you just scroll down and you can read. And we try to make sure we, we get these titles so this is program our time to grow. Welcome. And of course, hosted by your Julie Gabriel Matthews. Uh, and our lesson is the Corinthian letters, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, part 12. And this is just, and part 12 is not part 12, three. this is just carrying, dealing with the Corinthian letters. So who knows how many parts we'll add before we get to chapter, wherever it may be in this case. So I'm sure there will be many, many, many more parts. That being said, let's get into it. And we, we, we really just kind of got through verse two, really. And we, we made a notation about line upon line, precept upon precept. Uh, and we, so we won't go back through that. Please check out our last special note that we made. Check out our last broadcast from last week. That being said, what we really focus on in verse one and two about meat 
and milk in particular. And as we conclude it there, I want to make sure I bring that point back before you, that the issue does not lie with the milk or the solid food of the word of God, but it lies with the person. It lies with the person's, I call, spiritual digestive system, uh, which is the issue. Are they mature or immature? Just to be point blank and clear about it. So Paul, in this quote chapter, Paul, as he's moving through his letter, we looked at chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. We rehearsed that last week before you, that he's saying that there are those who are within the body of Christ. These are undeniably believers. I'll make sure we get that. They're undeniably believers, but there are those within the body of Christ who are mature and, and those who are not maturing. And so Paul opens up what we call chapter 3 and says, look, I can't even come to you discussing uh, the more meatier things, right? Because you can't handle them and your behavior is reflecting of those who are actually not saved. You're saved. You're Christians. But your immaturity is showing, you know? And so therefore, because your immaturity is showing, you're behaving with strife and envy. And this is kind of brings us to where we are. Now I referenced a Google, to Google an article by John Pastor John Piper, John Piper, uh, in particular, as the author, uh, long, uh, he's not the author of the article, excuse me, he's doing an interview, and it's essentially the transcript from that interview. So, uh, and it's called Long for the Pure Milk of the Word, January 30th, 1994. So, in verse 3, he finishes the thought. This is Paul in verse 3. He finishes the thought with, because you are still fleshly because you are so clearly referring to as we've talked about as we discussed last now going on our second week he's talking about the immature christians they are still fleshly in their spirituality right or in their walk with god is a better way to say that uh, this can be parallel with paul's admonishment of the christian christians in rome when he wrote for those who live, those who live to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on the things of the spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Again, for those who live to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on the things of the that's huge that's important that we we get that now the following words of verse 3 uh, and, and 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 contain Paul's rhetorical questions are you not fleshly and living like ordinary people is a rhetorical question are you not fleshly and living like rhetorical, excuse me, living like fleshly, ordinary people. This question is preceded, watch this, by his itemization of the apparent fleshly or carnal activities occurring among his group, among this group, excuse me, of believers, even in the and strife. Even in the and strife. So you're believers. But he's saying, look, I couldn't come to you getting into to deeper things. I couldn't come to you getting into, and, and I really want to say this I had, I had a great leadership meeting uh, this evening. And, and, and I won't go into that, but, but just, just had me thinking about some things here and, and realizing the absolute necessity for us to understand growth is a necessity. Growth is a necessity. We, we, we can't keep and, and as pastors, of course, and, and leaders, we, you know, we want to teach it with simplicity and, and, and make it palpable for people to, to receive. One of the leaders uh, made a comment that I don't disagree with, but it, it's also sad that, well, some won't really care about this or that. You know, some won't care about, you know, the deeper things. And that's a sad commentary, and it's a sad commentary based on what Paul is saying here. That's immaturity, in fact. That's immaturity in fact. And, and, and I didn't think about this then, but when he said it, it really crossed my mind and I agree with him. There are many 
who don't really care about the deeper things. And yet the scripture says, leaving the principles and doctrines of our most holy faith, let us go on to perfection. Let us pursue the deeper things. Paul says, oh, to know him. And the fellowship of his suffering in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in his fellowship of the suffering in the resurrection, and his resurrection. So, so I want to admonish you once again, brothers and sisters, don't stay in the shallow waters of scripture. Don't stay in the shallow water. And look, I know, hey, 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 we leave that to our pastors. As a matter of fact, I, I, and I may say this in our next leadership meeting, but but by just simply saying, well, you know, let's, 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 we're almost saying let's keep it shallow because some people don't really want to know deeper things. So we're just going to go ahead and teach like let's just be shallow. Let's let's stay in the deep, in the shallow waters and let's make sure everybody just really loves Jesus and really loves each other and we're good as if Satan is just going to just play around in the shallow waters. As if Satan does not want to get into theological issues and trip us up and believe it or not, some many of the heresies, yes, many of the, the erroneous teachings that's out there, and if I start naming names, then people will get all interested. I'm not going to do it. I want to challenge us as believers in Jesus Christ to want to pursue as deep into God as we possibly can. And think about what I said, into God. Into God. We want to pursue into God. We don't want to stay in the shallow. We don't want to stay back on, on the beach and, and just look out and say, wow, that looks really wonderful. Peter, Peter said, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. Come. I, and I pray and I admonish us to be willing to get out of that boat and indeed to come. In Ephesians chapter 4, 17, 18, 19, here's, here's what it says out of the Holy Christian Standard Bible. Therefore, I say this and testify in the Lord. You should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. They became callous and gave themselves over to promiscuity for the practice of every kind of impurity Excuse me, with a desire for more and more. Now, again, those are the those are the non-believers. I want to make sure we keep the, those camps, uh, 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 if you will, in proper perspective. But I want to, but I want you to note again what Paul says, and we even alluded to what Peter says about envying and strife. Uh, 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 James brings up in chapter three and four. Talking about, you know, from which does fightings come from wars and fights come from among you? Arguments and disputation, dis, disputation, including to the fact that some have fallen asleep or have been murdered. They were literally battling and arguing and fussing with each other. But James was writing to them as believers. Did you catch that? He brings forward the previous described accusation against them. Watch this playing favorites in verse 4, right? As further evidence that indeed they are fleshly minded and thusly immature spiritually. Let me read that for us so to remind us of what we're saying. If you just want to turn it there quickly, hopefully you already have it open. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, since I've made reference to it. Because you are still fleshly, for since there is envy and strife among you, are you not fleshly and living like ordinary people who are referred to this? For whenever someone says, I am with Paul, and another, I am with Apollos, are you not typical or ordinary men? And it's funny, not ha-ha, but ironic, in the body of Christ, especially, uh, we won't get into that, a certain, certain couple of camps who go on and on about authority and all of this, and yet you also see they some of those same ones in that particular camp, and there's probably other camps along these lines who I won't mention any names, because I want I would want to be in everybody, who love to go on about dominion and authority, and we're sons and daughters of God, which, we, which is true, it, 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 from one particular standpoint, biblically speaking, but that 
it, 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 it falls short of the understanding in this respect. Because then they start, it's this kind of favoritism type thing. Our choir is the best. And this, our preacher is the best. And I, and I can tell you, I'm not sitting far from where I've literally heard that spoken. I've heard it spoken. And, and, and if you don't toot your own heart, this is being said in, in a place we call church. A place of fellowship, a place of worship to God, a place of praise and prayer to the Father. If you don't, if you don't brag on your own, no one else will brag on you. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. David never said, "My soul shall make her boast in my soul, in myself." So I, I, I'm taking some time here. Because I want to make sure you understand, Paul is circulating. As a matter of fact, let me just get to my notes here. Favoritism is further evidence uh, that indeed they are fleshly minded and thusly immature spiritually. Immature spiritually. Now, chapter 1, remember, verses 10 through 17. We're not going to read it. Chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, 10 through 17. Well, what is he talking about? Once again, here it is. He calls them typical, ordinary, run-of-the-mill human beings who clearly are not exhibiting the effects of having been supernaturally changed by the powerful, life-altering gospel of Jesus Christ. You understand how powerful that is? Paul is saying, look, I came, chapter, uh, 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 chapter 1, chapter 2, he can do nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was there in weakness. I was there in fear. I was there in trembling and anxiety. We talked about anxiety. Paul experienced literal, physical anxiety. And in the final analysis, he's saying, and, and, and after all is said and done, this, this, this is what you've resulted into. Your believers, I'm not suggesting you're not, but you're fleshly. Some Apollos, some Paul, some Paul verse 4. So anyone talking about some Apollo, some Paul. So anyone in our modern day talking about our choir is better, our pastor is better, our apostle is better, our elders are better, our deacons are better, our mother's board is better. Anyone speaking that kind of thing is clearly still carnal. Okay, you know, we just want to be encouraging, and that's the cover. This veneer cover is sheer, seeing it right through it. If I can see through it, you know, Satan can. Hey, you know, Pastor Gay, you don't have to be. No, because we know this is going on. We know it is. We know it is. We have a whole show, and I don't mean any disrespect, because I know a lot of people love the show, including family members, called Sunday's Best, which is a religious program where people are coming, competing against each other, and in one of the genres that they're quote unquote genres. Is praise and worship. So they are they are required, and they accept because they get on the program. They, they, they audition, and they compete by singing songs of praise and worship and glory to God. Now, who gave you just being? No, I want you to think about that for a moment. Just let it sink in. Sunday best. You know what I'm talking about. And people are going on there competing with one another. Got it's friendly confines, you know. No, it's competition. Trying to get a record contract. Well, that's just business game. It's okay. But I want you to think about how many allowances. Have you ever read the words of Moses? Have you ever read the words of Christ in, in the Gospels? And, and he says, and you force Moses to give you writs of divorce? We will talk about how much God hates divorce, but notice what happened to Moses. They found a way to dumb down marriage, essentially. And by dumbing down marriage, it made divorce more palpable. So if you think and it's happening today, and, I, and I've talked openly about my own life, so I'm not pointing fingers at anyone that's not pointing back to me. I grew up in, these kind, in this kind of organization where they got up and bragged about one car over another, where they got up and talked about musicians over others, preachers over others. Hey, you a bad boy. Yeah, doc. I, I, I wish I was speaking something that is just isolated. No, there are whole competitions. Now, you know, you, you, you take your stance where you take it. I understand that. 
But my job is to speak it. Oh, it's just friendly. Oh, Gabe, you know, don't, 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 oh, Pastor Gabe, you're just being a little too tough. I love the show, and they praise God, and sometimes they start, the spirit starts moving, whatever we call the spirit, right? What we call the spirit. Somebody dancing. You gotta understand, I grew up with this, and there are plenty of people on this channel who know for a fact I did. And I grew up dancing, and I grew up speaking, speaking in tongues, and I grew up with that kind of expression. I grew up with it. So I, I'm in position to speak on. My, my job is to challenge us and to be challenged by the word of God to consider the magnitude that we have found a way to make it okay to, to, to essentially boast in ourselves and say, God, be praised in, in, this, in this situation. Some say Apollos. Some say Paul. He's like, look, man, do you not understand that that is a reflection of your fleshliness? Of your fleshliness? The divisive favoritism was apparently, and, and by the way, since I've, since I've opened up that can of worms, do you understand that, that, that the, the, the natural course of the show, the whole point, is for people to pick favorites? And if you say, Gabe, what is this about favorites? Have you read James chapter 1? Have you read it? Have you read James chapter 1? Have you read James chapter 2? In fact, let's just go there. Let's go there. I mean, you know, let's 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 be thorough. Right? Let's 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 be clear. Ah, for example. Start at verse 9. The brother, the brother of humble circumstances should boast in, in his exaltation, but the one who is rich should boast in his humiliation, in his humiliation, because he will pass away like a flower of the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and dries up the grass, its flower falls off, and its beautiful appearance is destroyed in the same way the rich man will wither away while pursuing his activities. Blessed is the man who endures trials, because when he passes the test, he will receive the crown of life that was promised to those who love him. This is in chapter two. Go to chapter two. Ah, there you go, chapter two. James chapter two, starting in verse one. My brothers, Hold your faith in the glorious Lord Jesus Christ without showing favoritism. For suppose a man comes in for a meeting wearing a gold ring dressed in fine clothes and a poor man dressed in dirty clothes also comes in. If you look with favor on the man wearing the fine clothes or having the better talent, right? Why do you think it's any different? Fine clothes so that you say, sit here in a good place and yet you say to the poor man, stand over there or sit here on the floor by my footstool. Haven't you discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, dear brothers, didn't God choose the poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? Now, he's only using this as an example to talk about favoritism. Yet you dishonor that poor man. Don't the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Don't they blaspheme the noble name that you bear? If you really carry out the royal law that prescribed in scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show favoritism, you commit sin. If you show favoritism, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the entire law yet fails in one point is guilty of breaking it all. Don't be confused, brothers and sisters. I'm simply pointing out something. And that show is a microcosm of shows like that. But that show is considering itself to be Christian-based. And this is a friendly competition where you are required to pick your favorite. 
you are required to pick your faith. Follow the show to see who you favor and if your favorite will win. And make no mistake, the critics come out in droves and decide. And they're not just doing the singing. Let's be real. Wardrobes. And they're not just talking about stylings and skills. They're talking about life, back, back, the backdrops of a person's life. And yet, why is one Christian being put in a position to be favored above another? Brothers and sisters, and I didn't get on here to, to teach on uh, 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 Sunday best or any of those types of competitions and things of that nature, but I, I need to make this point clear because essentially some favor Apollos, some favor Paul above Apollos. That's essentially what he's talking about, a favoritism. Some favor Cephas, go back to chapter 1, 10 through 17. We can't play, we can't play fast and loose here. We must be clear. We must be clear. And Paul says, not Gabe, not Pastor Gabe, or whatever title you want to give me. Paul says, that is an indication of your fleshliness. It's an indication of your fleshliness. Of your immaturity. So the, the decisive favoritism, this divisive favoritism, was apparently such a hot button issue that he does not just reference it as an example of their immaturity, but circles back, he covered in chapter one, I just want to open with, circles back and addresses it here in chapter three directly as he did in chapter one, but from a noticeably different angle. Watch this, the angle of thought. Ready? Here it is. In the first chapter, he used himself as the focus, making himself nothing in comparison to Christ. That's verses 13 through 17. So in, in chapter 1, verses 13 through 17 specifically, he says, really, thinking about it, for example, I didn't come doing all this kind of baptizing. I baptized a few people. I can't really remember everyone. I can list a few people that I baptized, but I know I didn't baptize many. I came to preach, and I came to preach you, Christ. What I was given to do. Right. In chapter 3, verses 5 through 9, he unites himself with Apollos. He aligns himself with Apollos and calls them both servants. Catch it? He calls them both servants, ministers, working for the same master in their given roles, roles given to them, in this case, by their Lord. By their Lord. I want to make sure I drive this home. I want to walk through this slowly so that you get this. Now, I may have touched your, one of your favorite shows, bless your heart. And I, you know, I just don't agree, and you may not watch me again. But before you turn me off, and if you watch me to this point, you're going to go back and see is it really about they're making you, 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 you know, they're encouraging you to vote one or another. They're encouraging you to choose a favorite by telling you the backdrops of their stories. They're doing it on purpose. It's for ratings, brothers and sisters. It's a show on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a channel. Now, this is a show on a channel, but I'm not pitting myself against some other teacher. Now, you may do that, and I beg you to, to think about that. If you're pitting me once against, one against another, you have to ask yourself, where is, is that coming from a spiritual place? Now, again, we've already discussed it uh, 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 about spiritual versus fleshly. If I am teaching the scriptures properly, now that would be the only reason I would hope you're listening. And if you believe I'm teaching the scriptures properly, but I really love your charisma or your looks or whatever, above another teacher, he's dry, he's boring, this kind of, and, you know, I hear you, but I, I beg you to really consider what you're saying. If that man or woman uh, is teaching God's word and teaching it properly, it may be dry from your estimation. They, they, they need a better background. I, I would watch them, but the background. It, 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 look, in your critique, if you're not Bereanizing it, as you know I, I use that word, in terms of the content, is their content strong? But you're dealing more with their presentation in terms of did they wear a nice dress or suit or, 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 or did their background look pretty good or did they crack some belts or uh, that, that got you loud? I really let it be. And don't get me wrong, I've listened to preachers and I've chuckled. I, 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 I'm lighthearted in my presentations from time to time. Uh, 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 uh. And there are those whom I listen to 
and the word of God just just comes out of them with great power. It does now. Now you can't listen to everybody on the flip side. So don't say I'm. I'm not suggesting that I go try to listen to everybody. No, you can't. One because not everybody's on, on in front of a camera. Not everybody is on Facebook or on social media. Not everybody is. It, it, not everybody who's properly teaching the scripture. So you wouldn't get to listen to everyone anyway. But when you start critiquing people on the basis of essentially what satisfy your flesh, then you are in line with what Paul says, and not in a good place when he says, "Are you not fleshly?" And notice what he says, and we didn't pound it, but you're just a typical person. You're not a person who is showing the effects of the change from God. More could be said, so let's move on. Metaphorically, like laborers in the field, one plants like the sower who went out to sow, right? In the parable, Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapter 8. So one plants, and the other waters. Note in verse 6. Again, this is all 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So if you say verse 6, what are you talking about? 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is right there in the scripture. In verse 6, the work of the servants was very important, but none more than the one, none of the work they were doing, than the one who gave the growth or the increase received. It is he that brings the increase. Chapter 2, he, he added to the church, verse 47. And God added to the church such as was being said. God. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't say that, that, that we're not uh, uh, you know, doing something important. I, I believe what I'm doing is important. As a matter of fact, this is what I do. This is what I do. This is what I do full time. You've heard me mention. We thank God for all of those who have who have been who have blessed the ministry and have blessed me and, 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 and enabling me to do the ministry. I appreciate you. I want to take the time to say that. But understand, my value is no greater than someone else who comes alongside or, or, or who is doing this and teaching the word of God. To, to a greater or lesser level, I, I'm not here to to, to to necessarily parse that out. And as I grow in my understanding of scriptures, I, I pray to increase. In my and present to you a, a fuller presentation. Uh, uh, but now, now I'm giving essentials and, and, and the basic nuts and bolts. You can take what you're learning here. Make no mistake. Uh, 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 unfortunately, the weather's bad, so I don't know how long we're gonna we're gonna be here. We'll just just be praying the weather we get some bad weather here. So let's let's rush on. We may cut this short this evening. I don't know if it's gonna. You've seen the flashing, uh, but we're getting some bad weather here. So be, be in prayer for those in the. Bolger Parish, Cattle Parish areas. We appreciate that. So, so, so metaphorically, like laborers in a field, and this is a, the metaphor, uh, we're laborers. Some plant, some water. Those are metaphors. Right? No, in verse 6, the work, again, is of the, of, the, of the ministers is important, but not nearly to be compared to the one who adds to the church. It is the growth that makes the work of the planter and the waterer of any value, which we, which he will reiterate, Paul will reiterate, using another metaphoric uh, analogy or another metaphor, uh, another analogy in this in the same chapter. I come right back here soon, and, and he's going to, and we're not going to get into it, I believe, this evening, but he's going to come right back and he's going to lay another metaphor out there. And these these metaphors. Are meant to help to create a picture, an image in our mind, to help us understand the, 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 what what the body of Christ is about, what what what, what the interaction is, and all what God is doing, the significance of Christ, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Two final points on this one that we do not wish to miss or diminish. Okay, in those verses five through nine, if you wonder what we're looking. At. By our, of our own mission. Point one can be found in verse eight. Paul mentions that the laborers should not view their work as inconsequential. See, so it's 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 not non-important or non-essential. What I'm doing and what 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 your pastor's doing and, and, and the, the teachers of Sunday school and so on and so forth, and many who are using social media are doing 
some tremendous work. I, I've learned a great deal. And I thank God for my brothers and sisters in Christ uh, who are teaching God's word you, through social media. And now there are many on there who are not teaching it properly. I, I understand that. I understand that. I'm not referring to them. This Paul's not referring to them in this case. But but we have to understand that, that they're not inconsequential. For there is indeed a reward to be received at some future point for that laborer. And then point two is found in verse nine, in which he calls all who work in the field as servants of God are in fact co-laborers. Wow, with God. Did you see it? Verse nine. So of, of the first point, we have many verses that speak of reward for the good works or for service rendered to God during doing the things of God by the Spirit. There are many verses in the New Testament talking about reward. We consider not the glory of this, the, the sufferings of this present time to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Uh, 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 we lay our labor is not in vain, you know, on and on and on. This this read one that I think just crystallizes it very well, Matthew chapter 25. And I've referred to this this passage many times in teaching. And it just it just it's just a wonderful passage. It's talking about our Savior. Starting at verse 31, here's what it says. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him. He will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another. Just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Watch this. That's context. Ready? Then the king, who is sitting on the throne, will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, so clearly the king would be Jesus, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Here's why. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, thank you, Lord, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer. See what he calls him. The righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, I assure you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. You did for me. So what do we see? What's the reward? Verse 34, and the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, foundation of the world. We are saved. I'm not suggesting that. But Ephesians chapter 2, let me turn that real quick. Stay with me. Ephesians chapter 2. I figured I might go here. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift. Not from works, so that one can boast. Here we are with that boasting. Now watch this, verse 10. For we are his creation, Paul is talking, created, writing, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time, so that we should walk in them. Created in Christ Jesus, saved by grace through faith, not of works least any man should boast, not of ourselves and of works that any man should boast, but we have been saved and been prepared 
for good works that have been predetermined by the Father, uh, 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 created in Christ Jesus for good works. So we have been made new. We have been. We are a new creation, right? In Christ Jesus, and for the sake of good works. And what good works? But in Matthew, chapter. 25, 31 through 40 tell us. Basic James chapter 2, we won't go there, but we can look at those passages as well in chapter 2. And now we're below where we were. In round 20. So do, 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 or is that point being clear? I hope it is. So of sec of the second point, so there's a reward there, right? So, so we can't deem what the good works we're doing as insignificant. I want to make sure you don't lose that. You can't deem the good works you're doing, brothers and sisters. Your labor is not in vain. Matthew 25, 31, 40 tells us. Uh, second point, we simply state the obvious. We are co-laborers with God. We are co-laborers. That's a powerful, powerful point. Co-laborers with God. Example, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. On the day of Pentecost, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly that came from heaven. It sounded as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and then sat upon them the uh, cloven tongues as a fire, gifts, charisma, uh, and in particular gift of languages, cloven languages, as as a fire, uh, and sat upon each of them, and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them. Okay? So the Spirit came first, and then the gift of languages sat upon each of each of them receiving different language and then the spirit moved them who was now in them moved them forward they are the great works of god you could also see another example in acts chapter 4 verse 8 we certainly are never to see ourselves as is equal but merely fulfilling our roles to a desired mutual end filling our roles to a desired mutual end Another quick point, we'll get out of here to note. In light of Paul's attention to him and Apollos as spiritual field, field hands, there it is, spiritual field hands, he carries the metaphor out to a logical conclusion that those who have come to faith are the field and introduces the metaphor of the church or assembly as a building, which is going to be talking about this in essentials. See how this stuff comes together? I love God's word. As the church or assembly, as a building for which he was a builder. But whether a field or a building, God is the owner. Whether a field or a building, God is the owner. Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2, the earth is the Lord's. Full is thereof the world and them that dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas. Uh, you know, but you gotta you gotta get that in your in your heart and in your mind, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it on the rivers. As a matter of fact, we can also go over to Ezekiel, the major prophet Ezekiel. Chapter 18, one of my favorite go to verses to understanding God's sovereign ownership. Verse 4 says, Look, every life belongs to me. The life of the Father is like the life of the Son. Wow. So we're playing favoritism. See how, see how the Bible is, 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 is so clear and concise and does not require anything, but we allow it to interpret itself. So look, every life belongs to me. The life of the Father is like the life of the Son. Both belong to me from God's perspective. Understand, the person who sins is the one who will die. And so we are co-laborers with God. And we actually end up making this point, as a matter of fact, in the previous broadcast we just did. Uh, so, so I want to leave you with that. We'll, 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 we'll get back up there with verse 10. And really, he's going to, just so you know, he's going to carry, he's going to bring in the metaphor of the building, but it's still under the, the guise of this divisive favoritism of Paul, Apollo, Cephas, I'm a Paul, I'm a Apollos. He's, 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 he's circled back around. I want to make sure you get that. He's come back around and said, look, 
that's you're you're showing your immaturity. Your immaturity is showing. You're you're proving that while you may be Christians, you are you are still fleshly. You are behaving really like a sinner. You're not a sinner, but you're behaving like a sinner, and you're showing immaturity. And so Paul drives that point home, and he's going to really actually, I'm going to take you through carrying this pretty much through the furtherance of chapter three. But we'll get into that on next week. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you're blessed. I pray that 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 what we are teaching here is a benefit to you. Uh, uh, sorry about that. It's a benefit to you. Uh, 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 please share this out. Uh, you can't really do a watch party within the channel because it'll just do a watch party in the channel. <laughs> but if you uh, watch me post this in just a few moments, go back in and, and click on it, that URL. Most of the people who use the uh, internet knows what that is. That thing right across the top there, copy, paste it onto your, right onto your, uh, 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 your page and uh, uh, hit enter and voila, it will find the video and then it will pull it up on your page and then that will allow people to be able to click on it and be able to come watch. Also, send a friend invite. Let's, 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 let's increase these numbers. Let's get more people in who, who get more access to the videos. I occasionally send out invites. Now, understand, don't, don't force it down their throats. Uh, please don't do that because uh, uh, sometimes I get multiple invites to, to, to groups. Technically, it's what they're called, groups uh, uh, that are not promoting uh, what I'm about. And so I, I don't accept. And, of course, I think it's 30 days or 15 days or whatever. But it, it times off. And so I do get people, unfortunately, who keep sending me, keep sending me invites to those groups, bless their hearts. And there may be a way. And, 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 and let me just say, that if you send an invite to someone, you, you notice that they haven't joined, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, it's okay. You know, just, just, just start sharing these on your page and give them access. All right, brothers and sisters, and of course the information there, please join us, connect with us on YouTube, follow us on YouTube at Victory in Christ uh, 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 dash broadcasting and put that dash in. See our logo, it'll come up. Connect with us, watch our videos. We've got nearly 100 videos up there, plenty of content. If you can't be on Facebook, I understand. So, so, so hey, catch us on YouTube. Uh, 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 if, if you feel led by the Spirit of God to be a contributor to the ministry, the information is also there for you. That being said, dear brothers be, and sisters, be blessed. Hopefully we'll see you Thursday for Sunday School and Review.